First, serious about online trading? Secure your funds, keep your merchandise safe, and use a company that keeps the buyer and seller protected the whole way through. That's escrow.com. Payments you can trust. Finally, if you're a domain name investor, don't you have unique legal needs that require domain name technical know-how and industry experience? That's why you need Stephen Lieberman of Greenberg and Lieberman or Jason Schaefer of Esquire.com. Go search for Jason Schaefer or Stephen Lieberman on Domain Sherpa, watch their interviews, and you can see for yourself that they can clearly explain issues, can help you with buy-sell agreements, deal with website content issues and UDRP actions, and even help you write your website terms and conditions. Stephen Lieberman and Jason Schaefer are the lawyers to call for internet legal issues. See for yourself at Esquire.com or APlegal.com. <laughs> hey, Sherpa Network. On today's show, we introduce Eric Bergman, an entrepreneur who recently bid against Drew Rosner and won great.com. We're going to discuss why he believes that investing in this domain name is um, valuable for the long-term life of his company and also what the auction experience was like for both of them. Uh, welcome, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Drew, thanks for coming again. Thank you great very much. Here, Tess. Tess. Yeah, it's great to have you. Oh, great to have you here already. This is going to be, <laughs> I think, a very punny show. Um, <laughs> so let's start out with, um, with a, a, a quick background on you, Eric. You were 30 years old. I couldn't believe it when I met you um, via you know, video, how young you are. And I even told my 12-year-old um, this morning, I said, I'm going to interview a guy who on his 28th birthday made $15 million. And my son just looked at me like, uh, what do you expect of me, mom? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. So you started out in poker for starters. Your, your money really came from poker. You were a kid with not a lot of money. You played poker. You're smart. And that went into to investing in, in a business, starting your business with your best friend. Yeah, well, the investment in the business was originally 10 bucks, so it wasn't really a big investment. So I probably would have been able to scrape that together even without the poker money. Just tell and me it wasn't 10 bucks of a domain registration. <laughs> it was 10 bucks of a domain registration. That really? was my total investment into the business, yes. In uh, 2007, 2008 sometime, we got into to affiliation, starting an online bingo. So the first domain name was actually lunarbingo.com. Unfortunately, I don't even own it anymore. And that was 10 bucks. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my big, big investment into the business. But yeah, I started out playing a lot of poker as well, which got me into the, the gaming sector to start with. But it was not that money that, that took us anywhere. It was just the big interest of building and developing websites and SEO and everything around it. Cool, cool. Okay, so you built on, on first, it was Lunar Bingo? Yes. Um, so you built Great a- Great name. <laughs> um, well, I want to know why you don't own it anymore, but we'll get there. So you built an online gaming site and, and really built that up um, primarily via SEO, much marketing or? Yes, yeah, so basically we, we built an affiliate website about Bingo. And we put in three months of full focus effort into that project and with the aim to conquer Google and earn shitloads of money. And three months in, we had made zero, this, nada, nothing. So we gave up, like all uh, proud entrepreneurs do, and uh, focused on, on other projects instead. And about a year later, we looked back into the uh, affiliate accounts and we realized that we made a thousand bucks. This is actually something. So those thousand bucks became the, the little spark that then got us the flame of motivation to really dig into this. So after that, we started developing more sites and mainly that we got into Sweden and focused on, on Sweden only. So we developed Bingo in Sweden for, I don't know, three, three four years before heading onwards to, to Casino. Okay, and, and at what point did you start upgrading domains from a new registration 
to something more valuable? Or when did you start seeing or thinking there might be a, a value? We we had uh, we had a great Swedish uh, gaming name. We had uh, I, I don't forgive me. I don't know how to spell it, uh, pronounce it, but uh, Spella dot com, which I guess is play. Yeah, like, play dot com. Yeah, yeah, play dot com in, in Swedish. Uh, we yeah, sold that's it last, really nice. Yeah, we sold it last year to uh, I believe to a Swedish gaming company. They haven't launched anything that I know of on it, but it is a really good name. Yeah. The thing is we. We, we started with buying affiliate assets where we built both websites rather than domains, but we mm -hmm. built the entire, we bought the entire property as an asset. And then we got some good domain names and I started back ordering some domain names that bought uh, the Swedish equivalent of landmoney.com, so lånapengar.com and paydayloan.com, but which one's SMS loan, which is in Swedish. And I started dealing with those domains, first developing them, and then, okay, we're not gonna focus on loans, and we sold them as assets. And then we started building our first big, big affiliate site. We really wanted to put effort into it, and we were called johnslops.com, which was just because I wanted to brand something. So it wasn't a... <laughs> oh, sorry. So, so when you were backordering the domains, were you backordering them because of the keywords? or because they were like expired names with backlinks or, S or you know, SEO value? A combination. So for some of them for only the name and for some of them for the SEO value. Okay, so then as you built up, you're basically upgrading as you go, it sounds like. Then I didn't catch the, you said you, you're ready for your first like branded domain name, John, what? Yeah, John Slot. So Slot as in, yeah, Slot Machine. Okay. And it wasn't like the John, big fancy like domain, but this John Slots. Yeah, like the name, just because we wanted something that people could could remember, and mm -hmm. we didn't. We wanted to build something from scratch, and we realized after that kind of the value of building it on on a brand rather than anything else. We were actually starting casinos in 2013, so actually casino sites, and that's when we first started really looking into to expensive domain names. We were into, uh, we were going through onfire.com, hooligan.com, uh, what was it more? Yeah, we, we ended up with thrills.com. So that was the first like big-ish name that we, that we got into. So you just said that you realized a value there. How did you realize that? Like, it seems from, from uh, other things that I've heard you say, Eric, that you are very number driven and attentive to the measurables. How, how did you, how did you um, extrapolate that value? I'd say that the first thing came from being a language, not dependent on language. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're, we were going for Sweden and then we entered Norway, Finland and Denmark, which suddenly you can't use any single exact match keyword domain because especially if you put Finnish into the mix, which is basically yeah, kind of like Russian, it's nothing like Swedish, you're, you're screwed if you're going for a keyword. There is no keyword correlation whatsoever. So I think that was the main thing starting to realize thing realizing this and we also started feeling that brands became more important in terms of the algorithm than it had been before mm -hmm. so we have we have really abused exact match domains to its fullest we used to have thousands of different exact match domains on very very small keywords and then it just didn't work as well anymore with exact match domains so we figured okay let's go more towards the branded situation than the keyword situation because we believe that's where Google is heading. So I'd say somewhere there got us thinking in those directions. Okay, so, so you felt like Google was making some changes and at the same time you needed like an international language to, to finish yeah. the one up. Yes, and we wanted to be able to commercialize it with advertising and stuff down the line mm -hmm. because that's not doable if you have a generic term. It's, it's gonna be a lot harder if you have uh, loan money 365 or something like that rather than if you have Lendify or whatever you're going for.
Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really neat that that gave you this foundation. So, I mean, it sounds to me like in, to summarize a couple years of your life, you built the heck out of this company. You went to IPO or you went public. I don't know what, what words they use out of the U S. Um, do you say IPO? Uh, yeah, we say IPO. Well, we okay. have a Swedish word for it as well, but IPO works. <laughs> okay. And what's super cool is you and your friend who co-founded it, both of you had the same birthday and that happened to be the day the company went public and you both made 15 million. Yeah. That's, really? that's super cool. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it was a good day. It was a really good day. <laughs> yeah. Best yeah, birthday bet. ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's super cool. So, um, so basically, you know, like every great entrepreneur, Eric, you're ready for the next thing. I mean, my, um, one of my, you know, a story close to my heart is that of Bob Parsons, uh, the founder of GoDaddy. And he, you know, he built this smart, um, program that, um, is now known as TurboTax. And when he sold it to Intuit, he retired to Arizona and, you know, was looking for something different, was looking for something to do. And that's where GoDaddy came from. He, and just like you, he didn't need to be working. He, um, he was curious and, um, you know, he wanted to contribute to the internet and this changing world. Um, and you want to contribute in a really different, um, you know, more, more, um, directly philanthropic way. Um, so it sounds like, you know, you found pretty quickly. I'm surprised because it would I would have spent a little while with that 15 million before I realized I wasn't happy. <laughs> um, but really, within a couple months, you were kind of searching for happiness, decided to be philanthropic, and and then and then w as you've developed this idea for um, a philanthropic company. How did you develop the idea for a, that, that a great domain needed to be a part of it? Let's keep the puns rolling. <laughs> well, I think it, for me, it started with the, uh, the SEO thinking. It's like, to be able to do this in the best possible way, PR will be a very important part of it. That's something where I feel that more or less everyone in the affiliate space is not good at utilizing PR. It's really tricky and it gets a lot harder if you have a long exact match domain with something. Mm. So for me, it started with, I want to do something that's good for PR. I want PR to be a big part around everything that we do. And the name will then be a very important thing. I want something that everyone can remember. Everyone has a positive relationship to, that works with puns everywhere at all times. <laughs> And yeah, it, it just builds a really big value. And I've seen what, what a big property can be worth. I've seen what kind of money we generate with, with our biggest side. And if you compare it to that and you put that in the long term, I mean, the name, even if you buy a super premium domain name, it's a quite small investment if you have a long term perspective. So it's, I come from that and get that in, into this. And it just made a lot of sense to go for the absolute best name I could find, more or less regardless of the price tag. I, I think that's a good point. I mean, I think a lot of the entrepreneurs that I talk to, uh, particularly if it's their first venture, you know, they, they just have such a short-term perspective. They're just looking at the here and the now. What can I afford to do now? How much do I want to spend now? And, you know, they don't, they're not even receptive to structuring these deals in different ways. It would allow them to not necessarily, because obviously most of them don't have the cash to lay out, you know, 900 grand for great.com now. Um, but they're not even, a lot of them aren't receptive to the idea of, oh, let's put a deposit and buy, um, buy an option, a, a purchase option at a fixed price over a period of time. And then I'll lease it so I can start using it on day one. And then I've got, you know, a two or a three or a five year ramp up period. And then by the time I have to execute my purchase option, you know, it'll be VC money. It'll be, you know, token sale money. It'll be, you know, maybe the business is cash flowing. Um, but having that long-term perspective is critical. It's, 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 it's critical. It, um, you know, it, it leads to making smart decisions 
um, that will change the direction of the business much later that you might even not realize immediately. But you gotta have gotta have the, the long term perspective. Yeah, and it sounds I like com- you do. I completely agree. Huh. I have a ridic- I have a ridiculously long perspective. <laughs> uh, I I say fifty years, and I see that as a minimum. And because I, I'd like to live a lot longer than 80 and I'd like to do this for the rest of my life. So for me, this is, as you mentioned with the GoDaddy guy, it's, I, I'm searching for something else than money. here. I'm searching for a purpose. Mm-hmm. So I want a purpose that will last for the rest of my life. I don't want to end up not liking doing this. I don't want to end up burned out doing this. I want to do this because I want to do this. And then I want to change this over time to whatever it is I like at the time. But I believe that my passion is within helping people. So if I create something that the end product is about helping people with giving away money, I don't think that that's something that anyone can get bored of. It's, mm-hmm. it's simply like the end purpose is to, to help, it's to contribute. That's why I believe we are here. So... For me, then 50 years becomes a completely reasonable decision. And it's hard to say that if you're starting your first business or if you're looking to do that exit or whatever. It's more, or if you're, in, if you're a publicly traded company, you can't have a 50 year perspective. No. But I can. So for me, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think. But even it's if really- you have a shorter perspective. Yeah, sorry. Even if you have a shorter perspective, I would say that. I think a purchase option and, and DC money to come is a great idea to do this because the name is so essential. Critical. Yeah, I think getting inside of this experience really helps other entrepreneurs who watch these shows and domain investors who want to sell to entrepreneurs. Um, Drew, let's talk about the auction. I was sitting with you in the front row at uh, NamesCon in Las Vegas in January. Mm-hmm when great.com came to auction. Little did we know that this Swedish gentleman here was over in Malta, which trivia uh, for all our users, you can all in your comments, guess where you think Malta is without looking it up. <laughs> um, and, um, Malta's and, uh, actually on my short list. Malta's on my short list of places that I'd like to move. Uh, if, Portugal, if Portugal doesn't you know, work out, uh, Malta is on, on the short list of like three places that I, that I, other places that I would go. Drew, it's, I would be happy to pick up the slack and go check out Malta for you. Uh-huh. And I could report on Sherpa what it's like. <laughs> we'll discuss. Or, or you can ask me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> darn it. That's too easy. <laughs> so, so Sorry for screwing up know, your phone. Right? Um, that, that we, it's, we're trying to remember maybe three people were bidding um, and we got two of them right here. Um, so Drew, what attracted you to great.com? Well, I, I mean, everybody knows I, I'm just, uh, um, I mean, generally speaking, I'm a value investor um, in, in, in domain names, but I'm also, and I've said this before, when you get a great.com pun again, um, if it's really a, a top, top tier name, the price you pay within reason doesn't matter um, because the company that's going to come along and want or need that name, um, it's not a mom and pop. You know, it, 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 it's somebody with a big vision uh, and probably a big budget. And um, and, and I'm also willing to structure deals long term that allow companies that may not even be able to afford a, a phenomenal name like that up front. Um, so, I, you know, look, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I'm able to justify higher than average prices for phenomenal top tier names than, than other people in the, in the space are. Um, but ultimately, I mean, great.com is lights out. It's just, it's such an amazing brand. And it's, you know, it's what, it's what you said on the, uh, on, on Andrew Allman's uh, uh, podcast. And I'm sure it will repeat today. It's, you know, uh, 
I actually just completely spaced out and forgot what you said. <laughs> but the name is, it's just, it speaks for itself. It has the ultimate positive connotation. You know, it, look, we're all laughing because it just, it comes up so much in language. You can't avoid saying it. It, you know, it, it's great.com. I mean, what, what more do you want? You know, it could be the next Amazon. It could be the next Google. It could be, you know, it's just uber generic and phenomenally positive and short and easy to spell and more or less universal, uh, meaning it cr crosses language barriers. And um, not entirely, but enough, enough that it matters. It's like, you and know, it's so like, super.com or i mean it's there are i would say very very yeah. few names that could well they're, they're, they're all owned by the same the same people actually but it's super <laughs> great ultra you know um all the same owner or were were the, were all the same owner yeah for um, me the reason the reason why super.com didn't interest me is it doesn't have the uh, the uh, the humble connotation that great has me Super is, that's to the extreme, but great for me is, is a more humble word. Yeah, and I don't- I don't you know, know if the, I buy into that. The, <laughs> the average person, I think, so I mean, when we talk with big brands who are looking for their next brand, um, you know, we often hear, I mean, certainly everybody wants a five letter, one word dot com that, um, you know, crosses language barriers but it's the connotations and that's what takes a long time to talk with our clients and understand what kind of connotations do you want and you eric are very attentive that you want something it sounds like that the average person can connect to the average person thinks that greatness is you know i can be great do great feel great right um yeah exactly and i could do that every day whereas super maybe is special for sometimes and that could be a great a, a great brand for someone else but not for what you're doing so um so how did you learn so as you know you're this guy you made a bunch of money you did a bunch of philanthropic stuff and now you're looking for a brand how did you find out about this auction have you it sounds like you knew about back ordering and expired names and so how did you go from that to a nine hundred thousand dollar purchase against Drew Rosner? I, I had sent, I actually sent in offers on this domain before the auction. And so we had been negotiating a little bit, but we were too far from each other at that time, or I, we weren't really far from each other. I would have been able to pay what they asked for. I just thought that I could get it cheaper if I, if I let it go for a while. And yeah, they were asking seven figures. I started with 50k or even less I'm not sure what I started and I I didn't for me it was hard to see who the potential buyer was and it, so I, I thought I had quite a long time to do this because I wasn't in a rush to start a project either as you mentioned I've only enjoyed the money for a short time I can enjoy them for a while longer <laughs> but um, yeah then I found out that the auction was going on it was actually uh, someone sent me an email about it that was involved with the with the auction so they probably i guess they had a list of everyone who's ever sent in an offer of the domain and they just exactly emailed it out it's That's an how it works yeah shout out there to our sherpa network it's always important to save old leads um mm -hmm. so you're an old lead <laughs> you're a young yes, guy, I, I, old lead. yeah i would probably have missed the auction if that didn't happen mm. So I got an, uh, an email, I think it was from uh, yeah, Mon Monte Con, Mon a yeah. guy everyone seems to know in this industry. He sent Monty, me an email. Monte Con, yep. Yeah. So he I've emailed you and he, told you about the auction. Yeah, he, he emailed me like, this is what's going on in the, uh, in the auction. And I was like, hey, that's the main name I want to buy. Uh, so I felt like, okay, it could be an now or never situation with it. And yeah, I've been trying to buy some other domain names, but it was nothing that I, I, I wasn't even close to as attached to those names as I was with it. I've already built this up in my head that this is what it's going to be. I can't possibly lose it now. Yeah. So if our dear friend Andrew would have gone a bit bonkers in the room, I might have followed him and I might have regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through yeah. the auction. Um, uh, first bid, who remembers? Anybody? 
I started because I started uh, taking that auction was at 100k before it started. So before the live auction started, it was at 100k, and I was actually on an adventure trip in Iceland in a small little hotel in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was just black in every direction. The hotel actually had a big real polar bear in the entrance. So it had a stuffed real polar bear. I mean, this is you, you get a feeling of where I was. And I was middle of the night. The auction started 1 p.m. my time, and I was going to go up really early. And that day I'd been snorkeling in two degrees Celsius water, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, so freezing point kind of water. So that was my day. 35, 36. Yeah, something like that. So just just above uh, freezing point. What were you doing snorkeling in two degree water? It's uh, uh, in... So Iceland is this very volcanic island, and it's yeah, because yeah. of the, I've been, I've been, the continental I've been. plate meet meet there. Mm -hmm. And there is a place called Stifla, where you can snorkel in between the plates. So it's like super super clear water, and it's a deep cliff like this, and you're actually in between the plates. And it's uh, there is this algae that is the only living thing, more or less which is a uh, luminous light green. It's really cool. <laughs> and yeah, we were there on this personal development trip and we were challenged to snorkel this. We, we wore like dry suits and stuff, but it was pretty cold anyway. And uh, as, a, as a challenge to experience cold and how to deal with it. So yeah, that was my day you, before you this time. You must have been in like a dry suit, right? Yeah, we were in dry suits, but we yeah. were still... So our hands got, got wet and our faces got wet. Yeah. And we were in the water for like 40 minutes or something. Wow. So it was definitely enough to be really, really cold. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. coming up with these swollen lips. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you had a lot of adrenaline in 24 hours. Um, in between yeah. uh, the tectonic plates, like what if an earthquake happens? Yeah, it would be a shitty day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't have bought great.com. Yeah, yeah. No, it, then it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> wow. That, I mean, seriously, that's a lot for one day. And did you have preparation? You knew a week ahead of time, a month ahead of time that this auction was coming or you heard like when you got out of the water with your swollen lips, which no, I, I knew like a month ahead of time, but I had missed, I, I had misunderstood how it worked. I've never been in an auction like this before. My plan was to go to Vegas. But I thought that the auction in Vegas would have been on the 8th of February or something. But that's what actually when the follow-up auction closed. Um, so I had confused the dates all together. So I, I realized that day that the auction was actually going to be then and there. And I didn't even know. The thing is, this trip was all secretive, like what we were going to do. So I didn't even know where we were going to sleep that night, if we were going to stay in tents or whatever. So like I had spoke to the like guys arranging like okay I really really need internet tonight <laughs> and then luckily we were going to be in dollars a burning a hole in my pocket <laughs> yeah exactly I really really need it so yeah it, it started with with that so I had obviously done quite a bit of research before I had a brief idea of what my budget would be but I also knew that in the heat of the moment things could change but I didn't think that anyone since the max bid was 100K already, I didn't think anyone would take it up to a million and I thought it would need to reach a million for them to sell. So I was more or less just staying up that night because I didn't want anything to happen that I didn't expect. And I was so tired after that day and almost falling asleep in front of the computer. And yeah. <laughs> Wow. So the, like the, the pre-auction or I don't know the words, um, ended and it went live. So in my perspective, sitting at NamesCon, you know, Monty is up on the stage and says, okay, great.com. It's already met the reserve. No, yeah. no, it had, it had not met reserve. Okay. No, it had not met reserve. I, I, actually, the reserve never got met. The reserve was above a million dollars or may, maybe it was a million dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're the, right. The, 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 the I, I used the wrong term. It, it are, the 100K that it had to have to start or something? What is that called? No, no, that was just, there was, there was you know, pre-bidding. Oh. And, um, and so the highest offer when the auction started, um, the pre-bidding was on Namejet. And so the, the highest auction, the highest uh, bid 
at the time the auction started was a hundred grand from Namejet. Some one of the bidders. Yeah, that was me. Okay, it was you. I was might have been me. Might and then it went to live auction. And uh, but again, it had not hit reserve. And then that and then the the bidding started. Okay, and then Eric, to give you a perspective, it's this room, the auction is a room full of, you know, people at tables, drinking, and um, everybody's got their laptop, and a bunch of them are bidding silently on their laptop. Some of them are, you know, holding up cards, some are doing both. So even Drew, he's like, I don't know, maybe I did that 100,000 bid, you know, because you're <laughs> doing both. That's the 100,000, might have been me. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he... He knew he was in a hundred. We've been on we've been we've been on a lot of names, so it's it's hard to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so... I can't imagine. It was a bigger deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's well, you know, hey, like look, I, you know, it's a big deal domains. for every anybody. Yeah, true. Sure. I sure. like how Drew refers to domains as going to their forever home. It's like adoption, <laughs> you know that that. Um, you're, you're, um, you're that end user who's really going to do something. It's, it's, it's a match. It's where it, it belongs. So, yeah. Aww. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, I keep messing up this or I keep derailing this story. So it's at hundred K from Eric. It goes live. Drew, you bid next probably maybe. I, I, I don't, I don't really remember. I don't think that I put a lot of bids but I came in at various intervals. And um, I think my, f my first live bid might have been around 250, I, I, I wanna say. And then I bid, and then I bid either at 500 or at 600. Somebody came in at 500 and then I, I went to six or, or vice versa. And then, Beyond that, I really don't remember. I may have put in one more bid. I may have bid um, at seven or seven fifty. I, I can't remember to be honest with you. Um, but I think that would have been, you know, in, in just reflecting um, because I was doing live bidding in the room. I don't have any, you know, I don't, I don't have any auction history to to look at. You know, on Namejet, I'd be able to see which, you know, exactly what my bids were and what the, you know, the increments. Um, but it was live bidding in the room. And so I don't have any, any auction history to, uh, to reference, but I think I probably would have topped out at, at, you know, in that six to seven fifty range. Okay. Yeah. As an investment waiting for a, but again, yeah, I was buying it on speculation. Um, not for, you know, not to, not to use it. Um, but you know, I, I look at a name like great.com and to me, um, you know, if I had bought it, I don't, I, I think you'd have a really hard time prying that out of my hands for less than, you know, 2.5 2. million on a, on a bad day. And I'd probably be looking for five. That's it. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal domain. Yeah. Thank you for not keep bidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like you a lot more now. <laughs> so what did you think as these bids were going up and up and you, you had, you know, thought you could get it for a hundred grand a month earlier. I, I never thought I would get for a hundred grand, but the thing is that the, the online bidding was horrible. I'm not sure if I had functionality issues or if it was functionality issues in general, but I had no audio and no video. I think that was supposed to have that. There was nothing like that. And there was only one bid button. So I couldn't, I didn't really know how this worked. I just had a bid button with one amount on it. I couldn't type anything in. I didn't know what time I had to bid. And I was in, I went from calm to panic within like a second. <laughs> Suddenly someone bid and I thought for sure no one would. And maybe there was other things going on in the room that I didn't see, but the first bid that came up on my screen was 500 grand. So it went from 100 to 500 like this. So probably there were things going on in the room that didn't go up on my screen because it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, so here, here's, what, here's, here's why that happened. Um, with the bidding in the room, you can see that the reserve price is whatever, whatever the range was. I, I, I don't remember exactly what it said, but there's, there's increments. It doesn't tell you exactly what the reserve price is, but it tells you that it's, the reserve is somewhere between 
10 to $20,000, 20 to $50,000, 50 to $100,000, 100 to 250, 250 to maybe let's say 500 or so, and then 500 to 750, 750 to a million or over a million dollars. Those aren't exactly what it is, but it's something like this. Yeah. Well, and so in the room, we're looking, you, you know, you can see that the reserve price is X and it's going to be, you know, whether it, it, I, I want to say that it was, you know, over $900,000 or over a million dollars. It was over a million. Saw, yeah. Uh, what we, but what we could see, what, you know, it doesn't tell you exactly. It just tells you greater yeah. than 900,000 or greater than a million, whatever it was. And, um, and so, you know, I think because the reserve price was where it is, the auctioneer immediately, you know, he's not going to go, okay, let's bid from a hundred thousand to 110,000. You know what I mean? Cause then we'd be there all day. So he just says, you know, all right, let's, let's see, let's see who's in the audience that wants to pay. And then he'll go, you know, straight from a hundred let's go 500. Is there anybody at 500? And if nobody had bid at 500, maybe he would have pulled back to 250 or, um, you know, Okay, yeah, that's what happened. So from my perspective, someone bid 500 and I more or less clicked 600 within two seconds uh, without even thinking about what I was doing. And within a few seconds again, it came two bids from the room on seven and eight. And I remember thinking, did that even happen? Or am I just bidding against a robot now? I'm not sure. This went from complete silence to crazy bidding war. Uh, I have no other information than this tiny little button on the screen saying bid $900,000. And this, I feel, think to myself, this is not a misclick moment. You're not supposed to like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> so I put it in for, for 900000 I actually have a friend of mine who is involved with the project on, on Skype at the same time, and he's just going bonkers as well. And I'm like, what, what is happening? <laughs> it's like, Okay, and he used to be a professional poker player as well. Well, he's still a professional poker player. For us, it's very relatable. You sit there, you wait, like you're, you feels like you're putting up a really big bluff, and you just yeah. don't call this, don't call this, yeah. don't call this, don't raise me now, don't raise me now, be quiet. And yeah, minutes go by, nothing happens. I still have no information to work with, and then it says like, okay, auction closed and reserve not messed or something like that, and then it states that they, they still will sell something like that. And I'm still not sure now if I'm happy with the deal or if I just did something really stupid. I wasn't really, <laughs> I wasn't sure enough what I wanted to say or how I wanted this to happen. But yeah, in, at the end of the day, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, the heat of the moment, I think you feel every emotion, right? But then um, it didn't hit reserve. So how did that, how did that happen? you you followed up, they followed up. What'd you do next? They actually followed up in there in the chat. So it just stated a minute later that it didn't reach the reserve, but the seller will still sell. So it's, I, I knew that just minutes after. And yeah, it still took me quite a few hours to yeah. fall asleep. <laughs> but yeah. I, I remember now, uh, I think he had the seller on the phone. He was on stage, Monty, this is was on stage, seller was on the phone, and, um, and I remember it, because they were teasing me. They were trying to get me to go to 900. You know, he was down there right in front of me going, come on, come on, come on. And, you know, don't be a pussy. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they were really giving me a hard time. They were like, you know, come on, just do it, just do it. And, um, and then I remember that he said, he announced that you know, the, the, the seller agreed to sell at, at 900. Yeah, well, congratulations. I think it's a, it's a fantastic domain. And even though you have no plan to let it go, um, it sounds like you're very aware that it has a, a liquid value if needed and um, it's gonna grow the value of your company. Yes, I mean, it's it's definitely not money thrown away. It's quite the opposite. And whatever, knowing what I know about SEO and all of these things, that whatever time and money I put into this at this stage also just increases the value. Mm -hmm. how, and, how do you calculate that? 
um, since you are such a numbers guy, how, how do you factor that into, you know, uh, the way that I see it is that part of your marketing budget doesn't need to be spent on getting people to remember the domain or on, you know, to, to, to increase credibility to a certain degree. What, what, um, what do you see um, and, and what, do you have numbers that back that or how do you envision that is concretely contributing to the marketing? I think, I mean, so, just, yeah, you yeah. go under. We'll sort of reframe it. Like, what are you using as data points and numbers to justify that value? And, and how will it correlate to, you know, the, the actual business, um, the, the, you know, the actual like sales numbers, marketing budgets, um, you know, is, is there a direct correlation? Yeah. I mean, to start with, I completely agree with Andrew. This domain could go for 2.5 or 5 million at another time. So I see it, even if I wouldn't develop it, I consider it to be an fairly safe investment at this price. So I would, I would not have, if I were to buy it for speculation, I would not have got higher than I would either, especially since I don't know enough for it. But I knew that if I would put in a, for 500K, I'm definitely never doing a bad deal here, for example. But looking at it from a, from a development perspective and how this will tie into things going forward, it's, I don't need the actual numbers because I got the long perspective, mm -hmm. which means that I'm so far ahead of the game. I see this as a project that will bring in billions. That's, that's my target with it. And if it's going to bring in billions, then a hundred, uh, a million, let's say it costs a million just to make the math easier. I mean, we're down to 0.1% of what I'm aiming for. If I'm off by 20% or if I'm off by whatever, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So to me, I didn't need to make these calculations. I think that they would have made sense if I tried to do them, but it was irrelevant. It was either I do this or I don't. It's mm -hmm. not going to make a big difference. I could have gone to 5 million as well. And I probably wouldn't have done this at this stage because I haven't thought it through enough. But if this was, let's say, two years down the line from now, and I started to feel like, no, I really, really, really want to do this. I've been thinking about, then I would have gone to five. I wouldn't have done this in this auction. So I would have cried myself to sleep if someone would have bid over me. But if this was down the line, I would probably have gone to five. And I agree that that's the value of something like this. If the buyer is the right one and they're as dedicated as they can be. So, no, I can't give you a good mathematical calculation of this because I didn't try to get one for myself. At a higher level though, is there, is there you know, you, you seem to have a, a pretty good handle on SEO. Um, and I'm not asking this blindly, right? Like I have a formula that I use in, in arriving at a domain valuation, um, you know, approximating what, what the name would be worth from a, from a commerce perspective. And mo most of it is derived from SEO principles. Is there, is there even... I lost you. You lost him as well though? I lost him too. He's frozen like this. Yeah, he's really cute though. <laughs> he looks great. Let's see how he many great, great times we can do till he comes back. <laughs> uh, you like have no idea saying. how many great puns I've already done. Just today, there's great puns all the time. And yeah, there you are again. The hey, last we thing we heard were you talking about a formula. Sorry. So you have yeah, a formula just, through. Is there like a high level framework? Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a formula, which probably most of our audience is familiar with. Um, but is there like a framework in your head? I mean, with your background in SEO and uh, understanding how web marketing works, is there sort of just a very general framework that you sort of reference or even think about in, in, a, in estimating what a domain might be worth? Or is it more of a I, gut feeling? I used to have that when I was doing keyword domains. Mm -hmm. Because then yeah. it made so much more sense. Yeah. When it comes to this, now I'm trying to translate everything into PR. And I know very little of PR. I just have a very big vision of what I want PR to be. 
And I believe that if PR can be mastered, it's something that has an a, a re incredible value. And I believe that very few utilize this PR in a good way. And within uh, affiliation, more or less no one does it. So, Affili yeah, affiliate. Yeah, and I think there's so much to be done there. And to be able to utilize that, the name is needed. So I would be able to build, if, if I had a completely horrible name with it, from with the time perspective I have and the knowledge that happened before, I could have built this into something, something great anyway. But I think that the name that is really, really good will just multiply whatever thing I get into. I mean, look, the only reason you're on this show today is because you bought great.com, right? I mean, if you had bought my great PR website.com, yeah. I don't care if you paid $5 million for it. I'm not bringing you on the show. So, um, you know, that in and of itself, this is PR. This is yeah, it's proof. Yeah, this is it. I mean, right. You, you're doing the circuit. You're doing the whole domain name industry circuit. And the only reason anybody wants to have you on the show, despite you being a very nice fellow, um, is that you bought great.com and obviously yeah. paying the price you paid, um, makes it even a, a more interesting story. But um, that alone proves out your thesis. Yeah. So I'm really happy with that getting this proof already because I was a bit nervous that it wouldn't work out. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, and that makes me think, Drew, sometimes when you're brokering a name, I see you say to a client, the PR you would get from announcing this acquisition and would pay for the domain. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, most of these people don't take advantage of that. Everybody's like, you know, wants it secret. They don't want anybody knowing what they bought. And, and there are very valid reasons for that. Um, primarily, they don't want to be signaling to their competitors what they might be doing. But, um, but it's true. I mean, the PR alone that you get from making a major domain acquisition, um, the backlinks, the the uh, the brand recognition, you know, just getting yourself out there from day one is priceless. It has enormous value. Yeah, and and uh, I don't want to say differentiating yourself from the competition, but showing that you own that space. I mean, that's like a mind share beyond PR. Well, and it, well, it depends on the type. You know, it depends on the domain you're buying and what type of domain it is. If it's a brand name or a product name or a certain, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, Eric, but, you own great, great, you know, that's yeah, man. everyone wants, wants to be great, to be around great, to feel great, to do great. Um, what do you have already like a tagline in your head? You, I know you don't have to like go live with it, but what, I mean, I feel like there are a hundred choices. I mean, I, I had, I had a talk with a, with a guy who will, Start working with us the other day. I had an interview and and he had a really good tagline. I wrote it down and see. But we're we're not. It, his vision was to make this to really own charity. Like okay, we're we're gonna do this right. We're gonna take it to a completely different level. And he said like we're not just gonna do good. We're gonna do great. And it just yeah, it it makes complete sense because charities yeah, usually say great. they're gonna do good. Yep, we're doing good. I'm doing great. Yeah. yeah. And, and let's take a minute because when we talk about connotations, like you were saying, you didn't want better. You didn't want best. You know, um, we're brokering younger. And sometimes we hear a little bit of, you know, what are you saying? I'm old. Um, you know, there, there, are comp um, there are connotations in different words. Like you didn't want super. What, how, um, how much both of you do you see that factoring into um, branding decisions in general? That um, well, that's what branding is. I mean, that's all branding is. Is it's about how do you make people feel when they see your brand? How do you make people? What what do people think about when they hear your brand? That that's all that branding is. It's it's about you know creating an emotional response. Uh, to your product or your service, to your brand, and 
that all is derived from, you know, the connotations, not just of the name, but of the look, the feel, what you represent, um, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, branding is ultimately, it's only about connotations drive to, you know, derivatives of, of your brand. Yeah. You know, yeah, sometimes so for example, yeah. So for example, I was, uh, I was in, in, in between best.com and great.com. I was thinking a lot about best.com. But you can't get I, 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 best.com is way more expensive. Yeah, I, it would have been. I, I have a client that's been trying to buy best.com for years. We've made very substantial offers, much more than you paid for, um, much more than you paid for uh, great.com. And those have all been turned down. So you, you picked the right one because you weren't going to get best.com unless you were ready to spend more or less everything that you put out that you, uh, you got from your, uh, your exit. <laughs> But he yeah, likes and, and, this one better anyway. He feels it serves his purpose better. Tell us wh about that a little bit. I think that best.com has a lot of a lot of things that great.com didn't have. So from an SEO perspective, Huge. for example, it, uh, it combines better. People don't Google uh, great traveling or great blah, blah, blah. They Google best because they want the best destination. Best hotels, best Japanese restaurant, best reviews, best car, best, everything. Best yeah. is, best where, is where actually is, one of the most valuable words in the world for SEO. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, especially if you're going, going wide because you can use it for, for anything. Yep. Uh, and it's even easier to spell than, than greatest. It's even more international. It's shorter. Uh, but for me, since I want to do this, with the with a charity tweak on it, best is a very far from humble work, and it wouldn't go well with with my vision. So regardless if I would have managed to buy, because I tried these words out with people around me because I was going for the connotation. I can mm -hmm. only say what my connotations is with the word. I cannot say what anyone else's is, and especially people who have no idea about SEO then, because I was more interested in. How do they react to the word best? Mm -hmm. How do they react to the word great? And it was actually those people that got me away from even trying to get best because my SEO brain really wanted best, regardless if I would have managed to get it or not. I never yeah. even tried because of the connotation. So mm -hmm. I, I completely agree with Andrew that connotation is everything. So, and the word I was looking for before was superlative. It's basically like competitive, right? Good a better best. Um, and yeah. so you, you wanted to remove yourself, even though in an SEL, which is really your strength, um, that would have seemed the best, but um, great is more approachable. And it also kind of connotes you work well with others. You're, especially your charity is looking to work with other charities, um, right? Yeah. Um, that, what are you saying? You're better than them you're the best you're over them but you're saying we're great we do great um let's do great together um yeah. you know, you're good together we can be great <laughs> um, all right <laughs> i think this was super informative i'm i'm glad um that we talked is is there anything else drew that you think our sherpa network wants to hear or eric that you want to share I mean, for me, I'm, I'm happy to hear people's thoughts on, on this and on everything. I, I love feedback, regardless if it's about this was a shitty deal or a brilliant deal or whatever. I just like to hear from people what connotations they have to this word, what, what I should be thinking about or not be thinking about. I'm, I'm going into this with a very open mind feeling that, okay, I have a very clear vision of where I want this to be 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how to get there. I have a lot of ideas of what I know since before, but I want to build an, I mean, just to drop a few things that I want to do with this, is that I want to build an organization which is fully flexible, where everyone works whenever they want, wherever they want. I want to create an organization where they have their own, where the staff creates the salaries and sets the salaries. I don't know how to do that. It's just a crazy vision I have that I want to be able to do. 
I want to give everything away. Just that thing changes the dynamic of everything. Who has done this before? Who can teach me this? I want to be fully transparent. Like I want to sit here and honestly discuss the domain name, honestly discuss how I was thinking, honestly discuss whatever, because I want that transparency and that vulnerability in this. Who has done that? What can I learn from that? Who can teach me something? So there are all of these things that at the moment is just visions in my head of where I want to take this, what I believe great could be, what I believe this can be that I will want to do this for 50 years. So whoever has ideas about these things, feel free to drop me a line and I happily take in your feedback. Well, thank you. That's really open of you. And if, if you're inviting feedback, then I just have to say, um, puns and, and any pun ideas or ta you know, a pun and a tagline, it's there, there, you know, one is fun and one is, um, productive, but they're, they're often interchangeable. So we've, we've had, a, had, had a great time making this show. <laughs> so. Yeah. So Drew, um, how do you like that vision of when you win auctions, you may be sending men in Iceland to bed crying? Um, have, have you ever thought of that? Is that going to affect your bidding decisions in the future? It makes me so happy. <laughs> That's not great. That's not in the spirit of great. <laughs> All right, sure, but now we're, we're, we're working. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I, what I, I'll, I will say is um, one thing that I really dislike about the domain name industry today is that you have a lot of um, skeptics. You have a lot of um, critics, people who are not necessarily very heavily involved. Um, they like to play armchair quarterback. They like to get onto uh, domain forums and say that wasn't real. This bidder's, you know, isn't real. That bid is fake. That guy's just, you know, bidding, you know, for no reason. He wouldn't actually pay that price. And, and, and there's just a lot of garbage. It's everybody with rhetoric. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody wants to chime in. And quite frankly, um, it's harmful to the industry. These people are acting ignorantly. And there were a lot of people in that room that day talking about, oh, those bids aren't real. Nobody was actually bidding. So, you know, those are fake bids, 900 grand. Who bid that? Nobody bid 900 grand for this. And then when the sale came out, when it was announced that the owner accepted it and Monty said, great.com sold. Uh, People didn't believe it. There were, there were headlines, there was people on forums saying, oh no, you know, it's a fake sale, it's never gonna transfer, let's watch the who is, you know, nobody's gonna pay for it. And here we are, now we're sitting here with the guy who bid $900,000, bought the domain, paid for it, and now he's gonna build a company on it. And what I wanna say is that I believe less than 5% of the best, domain, the best domain sales that happen are ever reported. I think that um, most of those people should find a different job or they should watch shows like this. They should really educate themselves. They should understand what these domains are really worth. And if you do that, if you understand what these names are worth, you'll be bidding just like the people who are actually bidding in these auctions who are actually buying these names, the people who are ignoring all of the armchair quarterbacks and ignorant folk who are doing nothing to be productive, they're only being cynical. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, I just wanted to make a point that there was a lot of cynicism around this auction that people didn't believe that these were real bids, they didn't believe that this was a real sale uh, until the name transferred. And here we are, we're sitting with the guy right here, he's 30 years old, he's successful, and he loves domain names. And there's a lot more people out there like him. And uh, this is what we need to be talking about. This is what we need to see. People need to wake up and realize that there are a lot of transactions happening at this level. And that quite frankly, he got a great deal on great.com at 900 grand. 
and I'm excited to see what he's going to build on it. I really am. Yeah, so, me too. Anyways. Yeah. Eric, were you aware of any of what Drew just said? I mean, I I followed what people were saying about the auction afterwards. I saw what people were writing on Twitter. And yeah, it was pretty much... I, I mean, this is what's going on in any industry about everything all the time. There, There is so much haters and so much people who just have opinions. Yeah. I mean, when we think- when we did the IPO with the company, it was all the same stories everywhere. They're never going to have that valuation. That's never going to happen. <laughs> this is just uh, pathetic. This is just blah, 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 blah. It's a scam. And yeah, I, th- I think there's no way around it. Unfortunately, I think it's going to stay that way in the domain industry. I think it's going to be that way around crypto. Uh, I think it's going to be that way around everything. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I hear you in that, but I do think that, you know, our Sherpa network are very bright individuals who maybe if they understood um, that they have some real power in um, helping to grow the domain ecosystem, that maybe they, you know, anyone who's participated in that or knows someone who has could educate them on, on, on its effects. Did that make you concerned about your purchase, question what you've done, or did your background, your experience um, with something similar in a different field make you just kind of shrug it off? I'm wondering, like, how does that affect future investors, other entrepreneurs who are looking at entering this industry or making a decision when they see a thousand comments that say, this was fake, don't believe it, do you think that affects the, the credibility of domain values from an outside or, you know, more outside perspective? It definitely affects. I would say that if I wouldn't have had this experience before in other fairly similar situation in terms of online media and forums and stuff, it would have bothered me a lot more. Mm-hmm. Now I've realized that I, I've been sitting and reading these comments in different forums when I know the background story in completely different situations. like. They have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. They are just sitting there. Yeah. And they've never the bought first time. more than $9 in their entire life. And yeah. here they are talking about acting like they should know what the value of great.com is. But uh, it they, they have no, they have no, they, they literally have, they just have no right. They, I mean, they, it, it's no different than saying like, you know what, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think Peyton Manning should have, sh- you know, he should have held the ball a little bit differently, right? It's like, you ever thrown a, you ever thrown a football in a, in a Super Bowl? You know, like, who are you to say, to, you know, but you're right. It's in every industry. Um, it just, it, it irritates me because it does affect people's decision making. It does. It does. Affect people's um, willingness to enter the industry, willingness to invest in the industry. Um willingness to make large acquisitions as an end user not involved in the industry you know it's um so we have a collective power i just want to you know i think that's a great way to go out um to you know we have a collective power as twitter users commentators and we can use that in a way to invite people into the industry um eric i really respect your um your drive for transparency and, um, and being part of this interview really is a part of that. Um, and, and for people to realize their comments do have power, but some of that power can drive people away. And I do think, um, I do think that we're a smart enough um, group of investors that we can, we can turn that around. Um, so, all right. Um, Great.com, the man, the myth, the legend. I think you need a tattoo across the back of you know, your back like this that just says greatness. What's a greatness? Go for that. Or, great. or, or go, to, go to Norway and uh, uh, you can change your name to be great.com. <laughs> like, like, like Kim.com did. You know I had a client who named his child Google. <laughs> and he bought, so he could buy tons of domain names with Google in them. For real. Mm-hmm. Yep. Valid reason, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good investment. Absolutely. Went to the children's college fund. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know I named you Google, but 
You can go to any college you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I take it, right. Eric, that your, your girlfriend, Johanna, must not be listening anymore because she- No, she has fallen asleep. <laughs> oh yeah, well she would be vetoing that if she if she heard. Just saying. So, okay. I've actually already suggested to name. I've actually already suggested to name our our uh, well future children after various uh, uh, affiliate sites I've been running. <laughs> she's already been vetoing that. So. <laughs> nice. Utopia was one of my first big things, and I thought this is a great name for a girl. Right Utopia. Then. Great name. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm with her on that one. Uh, well, thank you for joining us so late at night from, from Malta. I really appreciate it. And I think our whole Sherpa Network is going to learn quite a bit from this. Um, I can't wait. I hope you come back a year from now, Eric, and we can see all the great things that you've done. Oh. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be back in a year from now. It will be very interesting to tell you the stories from them. Cool, cool. Well, who knows? Drew might just be in the same screen as you a year from now, living in Malta, and you guys are out having drinks while, while we show, <laughs> while we film. I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll say goodbye to our Sherpa Network. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Thank you.